Um, Roland's going to smile, and he's going to raise his glass, and uh, he's going to say to Michelle, to your health, and then he's going to take a walk. And he raises his glass and goes, to my health, and drinks his glass. <laughs> He's had a rough few weeks. Very well, sir. And I'll, like, hand it over. And he, um, just very cordially, like, bows his head, and he goes, I have been in prison for a week, after all, and he kind of throws it back, and he kind of, he doesn't drink a ton of it, because it's, it is yours, and he just, like, swishes it around his mouth a little bit, and like, very wine snob ish of him, and hands it back to you as he's doing this, and swallows it, and he goes, oh, hmm. That's quite fine. Indeed. Should I... Oh, sorry. Go, go ahead. ahead. You're good, you're good. Oh, I was going to say, should I describe... Uh, yeah, sure, if you would like to do so, please go ahead. <clears throat> um, so, Michel D'Augustine is, uh, like Roland, a guy probably in his earlier... Or he's a little older than Roland. He's probably in his mid-30s. and He's got... Uh, He's got, he's like jacked. He's got these huge arms, but kind of like a, a, a pot belly and he's bald head and he's got a, a big black mustache, kind of a ruddy face. Like, uh, he, he looks like a bouncer at a biker bar. And then, um, uh, Jean, Eugene Lamont, his squire is this kid. He's probably 17 years old, 17 or 18. He's a, a bean pole. He's, um, Taller than, uh, taller than Sir Roland, um, about as tall as Michel. Um, and he's just, he's skinny little kid, kind of a, uh, pimply face. And he's, uh, he, he gives, he gives the impression of like a, like a baby giraffe. Like he, he, he's, there's like more, more of him than he knows what to do with. Uh, and he, uh, uh, while Michel is a lot like Sir Roland, um, and that he's, you know, willing to engage with people, and he looks like someone who's sort of gone through the rigmarole of court life at least a little bit. Um, Gene is is pretty awkward. He, it uh, he doesn't really look any of you in the eye, and he he's kind of he's kind of hiding behind Michel the whole time. I'll kind of smirk at Gene and, and do a nice curtsy. And he um, immediately just like bows and, and gives you the uh, the proper greetings as they are want to do. He does not have a choice in the matter, but he seems quite excited to do so. Oh, um, Maya, I think you you got you got a crush on yeah. And you see the boy like start to blush and like he just like takes a step behind Michelle, even though it doesn't help at all because he's taller than him. <clears throat> I'll just roll my eyes and take another swig of wine. I can't have any of you tempting young Jean away from the knighthood. <laughs> and Orlo will be like, oh, no, of course not. But any friend of Roland's is a friend of mine. And I just walk over to both of them and kind of wrap my arms around them. <laughs> <laughs> both at the same time. <clears throat> Michelle kind of just like pats you on the back and he looks over at Jean Cyril and he goes, oh, some fond friends you have here. <clears throat> no, 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 let's not go describing uh, labels to our relationship quite yet. Oh, Immerin hates labels. He looks like the type. <clears throat> There's a, where is it we can find a drink around here? Other than Liar's pocket. <clears throat> Michelle pulls a little flask out of his pocket. I don't pulls one out of where you were hiding that. Yeah, I mean... <laughs> oh, don't you worry about that. We have our places. You <clears throat> haven't drank in weeks, have you? Uh, just a white lie amongst friends. <clears throat> <laughs> uh, 
And Durza kind of pipes up and goes, come with me, I'll take you to the best place to get a drink around here. <clears throat> and um, she walks you down <clears throat> back towards the gate. Um, Max and Steve uh, in accompaniment as they should be, not eaten. <clears throat> um, as you're walking down towards the gates, uh, there's a particularly nasty badger on the way down and he hisses at you. <laughs> now, now, Bartholomew, not. <laughs> Be nice. And <clears throat> you make your way back towards the gate, and <clears throat> as you get closer, you start kind of turning away from where, like, the town part of it is, and you kind of realize you're not heading into town. <clears throat> Uh, there's a, where is it we're going? Seems like we're not heading into the city any further, huh? I didn't say I was taking you to the city. I said I was taking you to the best place to get a drink. Old hole in the wall, then. Very good. I'm in. And as you guys you know, wind, wind down some of the, these paths, she pushes open this, this large door to the side that she kind of walks up to. And inside, there's, um, like, Ten guards just sitting there, and the door like gets pushed open, and they all stop and kind of like look at the door, and then see that it's Durza, and then just like throw the glasses that they're holding, and just all immediately stand up. <laughs> oh, at ease, boys! I'll be in the area all day. <laughs> and Durza just kind of looks over her shoulder at you, shakes her head, and goes, "As you were." They wanted some of the best drinks in town. I knew where to get them. And they go, I, I, and she goes, I already know. If I wanted to do something about it, I would. <clears throat> so inside of this building, it's literally, it, it's basically just a barracks room. It's a, a long, open room that's got a bunch of beds just kind of lined up and chests at the end of the, the foot of each bed. And, um... Like I said, there's about ten of these the town's guard just kind of sitting in there, completely dressed in uniform, like just having a merry old time. Um, there's a bunch of cards on the floor, and they were clearly like smoking and, and drinking. And she goes, "I'll be back for you in the morning. Don't do anything dumb." Aye, aye, ma'am. I promise not. nothing. <laughs> <clears throat> so I'm gonna look at the bartender and be like, "All right, what? What do you drink, yeah?" <laughs> and you said bartender. It's literally just a bunch of of towns guard, and the one guy just kind of like pushes the bed over that he's sitting on, and underneath it, it's just like this row of just kegs, just kind of like lined up underneath of it. The spec. <laughs> And he just picks one up and just, like, hands it to the, the group of you and grabs a couple of glasses, as many as there are of you, and just hands them all to you. <clears throat> and he's like, if you need any more, let us know. And he just kind of, like, turns his back down, keeps smoking, and, and continues to play uh, cards with the, the guys with that he's with. Hey, Roland, you like to play cards, don't you? I do like to play cards, Olo, but uh, I have a... A pressing matter to discuss. And he looks over to Michelle. Now, I, I don't want to do this in front of our mercenary friends, but I I do have some questions with regards to your mission. Yes. Well, can't hurt. And he kind of, as he's pouring himself a drink. <clears throat> right. Um, where where were your reports? What? Why didn't you send anything back to to the the, the shattered keep? Um, well, boy, that's complicated, but, um, you see, what happened was, uh, we got a bit more tied up than we anticipated. I mean, was it, was it a vendor? I, I, you know I understand. I'm, uh, I'm gonna be, like, trying to make it look like I'm not listening, but I'm listening very intently. <laughs> 
Well, yeah, Am- Am- Amarin's listening. He's just not trying to make it look like he's not. <laughs> or Loki can't help but listen. Well, um, <laughs> it, it it did start off slightly that way, and um, well, well then, as you know, one thing led to another, and um, we had to make an expeditious trip. Uh, and then we ended up in the bad part of town, and um, uh, then I ended up in jail. <clears throat> A- answer me this, Michelle. Have you broken your oath? Oh, of course not. Never. Oh, well, that's good. Uh, there was a good chunk of the time uh, as I was riding down here, I was worried that I would have to kill you. <laughs> you mean try? Well, I I did enlist some backup. <laughs> uh, jerks his head over towards the other people at the table. Oh, I might be older than you, but you know I'm tougher than I look. And he kind of just like rolls his shoulders back a little bit. <clears throat> yes, Roland, I'm not sure what made you think I'm going to kill this fellow. In fact, I like him so much, I might kill you. <laughs> well, there's an interesting proposition. <laughs> He smirks and kind of punches you in the arm at this point. And then Orlo is just going to lean over to lie and be like, wait, we were the backup? Your guess is as good as mine. Yes, Orlo, you were the backup. Imagine the dire straits I was in. Well, hold on here now. Excuse me. <laughs> See, I'm not they saying we couldn't they can't do it. to kill you, Michelle. <laughs> so... I got your back, I, Michelle. I know you made contact with that potion master. Were you able to learn anything from him that could be of use to the scholars back home? Um, I think there's definitely a few things we could uh, use, but the problem is, is there's not much of anything left around to make them with. Um, I think we could find some of the materials up by us, but uh, to find them in uh, enough quantity to make them useful might be difficult alone, and that's part of the other part of the trip I was making, was trying to find uh, a little bit of extra assistance in that matter. Um, But uh, we got a bit waylaid, as I said. Oh. Oh. What's your next move? I mean, were you able to find the, the formula for the uh, whatever stone they're using around here, this wonderful material? He kind of leans in closer to you and he goes, it's such a wonderful thing. I don't know how they do it. I, I kept trying to find out, but the fat one is very, very, very annoying. <laughs> I suppose if we uh, rid them of this inconvenience, they'll be indebted to us for some. That is a point. Uh, what's going on, for that matter? I, um, I'm a bit out of the loop, I suppose. Right. So, <clears throat> as near as I can tell, there's some eldritch being of some considerable power holding sway over the town. The rest of this band of mercenaries here is uh, contracted on some personal level to end her. So... Uh, I suppose, in exchange for their help, I should help them. And that's sort of where I'm at right now. Good enough, we're in. Fantastic. And I'll just kind of hold my glass up and a cheers. And he just downs his and pours, starts pouring another one, and he goes, anyway, been cooped up for a couple weeks now. I could use the extra refresher. <clears throat> um, can I roll an insight to see if uh, he's being truthful about keeping his oath and everything? Please do. 16. You've known him for a very long time. And you want to believe him and you want him to be telling the truth but there is a part of you that's still itching with the notion that he's not you can't confirm it 
from what you are feeling right now, but it does kind of still stick in the back of your head. <clears throat> um, Roland's going to smile, and he's going to raise his glass, and uh, he's going to say to Michelle, to your health, and then he's going to take a long drink. And he raises his glass and goes, to my health, and drinks his glass. <laughs> so, um, out of curiosity, what say... Say that you had broken your oath. What would what would that look like? What that? What what exactly is your oath? To drink all of the wine in this glass. <laughs> <laughs> and he pours himself another glass and starts drinking that. <laughs> Charming. Uh, Lyle, we we swear an oath to uh, uh, poverty, chastity, and righteousness. To uh, never, never take a spouse, never to father any children, uh, never to own any physical wealth beyond our means. Um, everything we earn in the course of our adventures are to go to the greater cause of the uh, the order, which is the furthering of civilization, um, the endless fight against evils and chaos, uh, and of course, to maintain a righteous bearing, uh, not to tell a lie or to cheat or to steal. And he raises Generally, his glass and goes, here, here. <clears throat> and um, Roland uh, raises his glass again and, and takes a drink, and he, he fishes under, uh, under his mail and comes out with his, uh, his necklace, his holy symbol. And it's a, it's a golden amulet, and on it, it has a, a picture of a, a, a tower, a watchtower with a flame on the top. Um, he says, this, the, uh, the lighthouse, um, the symbol of civilization. We do not build lighthouses for ourselves. We, of course, know the rocks around where we live. The lighthouse is for, for others, for travelers along the road, people we may never meet. Um, doing good for its own sake, uh, watching out for others where we can. That's sort of the ethos of our order. Very interesting, but what does that have to do with tea? I've never seen you drink tea. You mentioned poverty, chastity, charity. What? I've never seen you once drink tea. I don't understand what all that lighthouse business has to do with that. Right, well, I suppose I don't have a taste for the stuff, Orlo. But you made an oath to it? Right, yes. Well, well my, minus, minus the chastity, chastity that just is absolutely, absolutely lovely. Well, they are workarounds. <laughs> Michelle raises his glass and goes, yes, sir. <laughs> I'll, I'll drink to that. that. Uh, and uh, Roland, Roland kind of wistfully looks down in his glass for a second, goes uh, the chastity, and he takes another long swig. I'm not drinking to that one. Oh, you prude! Uh, prude to be what? Where are you from, Emera? Rackercord. Well, one day they're going to get jokes out there on Rackercord. On that day, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. I hate you so much. <laughs> um, so is there anything else you guys want to do for the evening before you take your long rest? I want to go cuddle with Bartholomew for a little <laughs> bit. Because I know he's going to be gone at dawn. Um, Laya, do you want to do anything else? I, I have a thing. Um, I mean, I'll make sure that um, that Steve is, is good for the night and fed. Um, I am making sure to not drink very much. And other than that, um, I will uh, write in my journal and then go to sleep. Hold on, let me show you these dice. I'm just kidding. Uh, don't worry, Absolutely I'd be on no. shenanigans. <laughs> when Laya goes out to check on Steve, um, 
Sir Roland's going to say, oh, Max, of course, and he's going to follow her out. Um, and when they're both outside, uh, Roland's going to say to Laia, so I'm sure you picked up on that in there, but uh, I'm not so sure that Michelle has stayed true uh, to the ideals of our order, which is his own business. Um, and as long as he hasn't given into banditry, it's no business of mine. Uh, but it is something that I need to know going forward, because uh, otherwise he's going to be of very limited use to us. Uh, I'm sure you also noticed that uh, the boy Eugene is somewhat taken with you. Um, Sorry about that. I hate to ask you to do this, but I need you to lean on and see what he can tell you about what he and... Uh, no, don't make that face. Uh, I, you don't need to do anything untoward. I mean, the, the boy will trust you. He'll open up to you uh, in a way that he won't open up to me. Um, I, I just need to know uh, if, if I can still trust my friend. I'll just kind of sigh a little. It'd be much easier if he was a little more attractive, you know? Well, there's not a whole lot I can do without that. Use all right, all right, all right. I have plenty of those, yes. Thank you, Lyle. I owe you. We'll, we'll see. see. And uh, while he's out there, uh, Roland's going to scratch Max behind the ear. And you yeah. keep an eye out, too. <laughs> And as he usually does, he kind of, like, buries his head into you and kind of pushes. And just... And I'll... Uh, when I see Max do that to roll it, I'll just kind of look wistfully at Steve. <laughs> Go ahead and make an animal handling check. As you guys are... Today could be the day. <laughs> as you guys... Today is gonna be the day you're gonna pet that owl bear. As you're all I'm rolling these, sorry, God, Sam. You, you're just you're just watching Orlo like pace around the town, just being like Bartholomew, <laughs> Bartholomew. <laughs> <clears throat> and as as you're doing this, Orlo, all of a sudden you just see this fucking like set of trash, like kind of just get pushed over. And then, like, a box falls over, and then <clears throat> Bartholomew just, like, pokes his head out. Ah, <laughs> oh, Bartholomew, there you are. And I just start walking over towards him. How long does this fucking last? <laughs> Till sunrise. Hold on. <laughs> Till sunrise. Okay, <clears throat> all right. <laughs> I want to spend one last few hours with him, okay? Leave me alone. <laughs> um, you said a 17, Laya? Yes. As you're kind of like giving Steve puppy dog eyes. He kind of like looks over at Max and then looks at Sir Roland and then like looks at you and he just kind of like puts his head forward just a little bit. <clears throat> I, I will slowly so that he can see reach over and give him a little scratch on the head. And he, like, you see him kind of, like, wiggle into it a little bit, and then he just, like, steps back and, like, snaps at you, and then just lays down. <laughs> I'll take it. <laughs> so, so I will... Sorry, Sorry go, go ahead. ahead. We got it. Um. <laughs> Kelsey. So anyway, here's Wonderwall. Um... I will revise what I previously said. When I go in, I do I do still write in my journal before bed, but I'll just keep like like sneaking glances over at little Jean and, and sending him smiles while I do so. As you walk inside, Laya, um Michelle walks outside to, to go speak with Sir Roland. Um and the the guards have all but 
stopped doing what they were doing and kind of all fucked off and either went to bed or went did their rounds or whatever they were doing. Um, so it's really just Emerin, you, Jean, and then two guards that are inside at the moment. So we have panned over to Orlo, sitting, staring wistfully out into the ocean, petting Bartholomew, as Bartholomew just uh, disappears back into the, the bag. This episode brought to you by Wistful Staring. <laughs> you take a long rest, you have all your spell slots back, you have all your HP back, and um, as the doors slide open to the, the barracks, <clears throat> a lot earlier than you would have particularly cared for, um, Durza is just standing there. <clears throat> and unlike what you saw her in the other day, she's in, like, full combat gear. Oh, she's ready to fucking go. Sick. <clears throat> And she just looks at the group of you and goes, I thought we were going. Get up. I'll, I'll get, get up and I'll, I'll, I'll wait, wait until, until I know, know that Jean is looking towards me and just slowly bend over to get my stuff. <laughs> as you start to, as you do this, he's like picking up his, like his stuff and uh, Michelle's stuff and he just like drops all of it and, just, uh, uh, and then just like starts scrambling to pick it all back up. And Michelle turns and looks at him, and he's like, Boy, get it together. Emeryn's going to bend down next to your ear at one point, lie, and be like, I thought he was your type. Are you fucking with him? Because don't get me wrong, I, I love a good fucking fucking with people, but... I'll tell you about it later. Yeah, very good. Keep it going. I'm getting a good laugh out of it. So, where are we going? We're heading to this uh, waterfall. I don't know. We're going to meet Bonwo somewhere, wherever he... I, I don't know. Oh, Bonwo's leading the expedition. Uh, no, but he knows where the door is. Ah. I wouldn't let him lead anything, just to be clear. Very good. I was going to say, because, you know, the whole idiot thing. Uh... Yes. That Lady Dalton, exactly. has anyone ever told Kelly, you how fuck. pleasant you are in the morning? She just kind of like looks over to you every day. <laughs> well, I'm a little bit dressed here, but she's starting to grow on me. Um, as as they're all in their bantering, Orlo kind of walks back in and wipes a single tear from his eye. <laughs> oh, says, what's wrong? You okay, buddy? Oh, nothing. I was just saying goodbye to Bartholomew. Oh, is the badger gone? Yeah, it's it's morning now, so he's back in the bag. Oh, good. That thing was an asshole. Gone, but not forgotten. <laughs> Thank you. I, I liked him, but he was an asshole. <laughs> As badgers are, but that's why we love them. So are you. You don't hear us complaining. We do complain sometimes. <laughs> I haven't even been here that that's long. I, I hear you complain expecting. all the time. <clears throat> Okay, so now that we've established we're all very clever, uh, rolling like buckles this sword belt, let's go, um, I don't know, fight this waterfall. Chase them windows.